hello, uh, welcome to the first Beckhart session on um, wire ropes. Uh, these sessions we're going to cover uh, an aspect of wire rope usage. I'm here with our technical applications specialist, Harold. Good morning, Pete. Good morning. Harold um, is located in Gelsenkirchen, Germany. Um, he's been, uh, he has 20 years experience in the wire rope industry um, and he's part of our crane and industrial sector. Crane and industrial for, for, for Beckhart is um, port cranes, construction cranes and also uh, wire and steel mills. Um, so uh, Harold, please do um, tell us why, why it's important to measure wire rope. Yeah, the measurement of the rope, it's a really important tool because it must be ensured that the rope diameter that you measured matched with the rope drum groove or with the sheaf groove, all sheaves they installed on the application. Also, you can see you received the right rope diameter you have ordered. The rope is in the right diameter range because you can have different diameter ranges. And you can see that's the next point, it's also an important point, the roundness of the rope. So the rope is round or the rope is unround, that means the rope could be oval. Is the rope too oval, you can't use it. So, so to summarize the sort of the, the importance of the, of the right size and shape of rope is to make sure the, the, the rope life and uh, that you don't destroy your, your equipment. Yeah, you have two possibilities, the rope is too big or too small. Is the rope too big or too small? And we talk about a multi-layer spooling like you see in the figure here you can have a bad spooling behavior. That means the rope jumps not on the, the position he should jump in the next layer. And then you receive some gaps, you can see in the figure here, or here the spooling pyramid, yeah, the optimal spooling pyramid in the green color. It's not given, so then you have more this picture and that's a not good thing. Thank you, Harold. So we can see why it's important to measure a wire, wire rope. What's the sort of best practice in, me in measuring the rope itself? We have a standard to measure the rope, that means we measure the rope on one point in two directions, let's call it x and epsilon direction, and of a distance from one meter from the measurement point. We have the second measurement point also in x and epsilon direction, and the average of all four measurement results, that's the call it actual diameter or measurement diameter. And in terms of best practice, is there, is there, are there sort of tips for best practice? Yes, of course. Uh, it must be always given that the rope measured over the biggest diameter you can see here. That means the rope must be measured from the crown to the other side of the crown and then you have a rope diameter there. It's, you can see there it's okay. Thank you. And there are any sort of tools to make things easier for you? You can use for measurement a normal caliber, yeah, caliber gauge or you can use a special caliber with big plates, as you can see in the figure on the left side, then it's always given you have automatically um, the right position for the measurement, that means the biggest diameter, and you have a more easier measurement process and a more accurate measurement result. But you can use also uh, outside micrometer with shows like this, and then you have also excellent measurement result. Thank you. Um, Obviously, hopefully you, you do things correct first time, but there's always a possibility you make errors. Are there any sort of common errors people can make? Yes, of course. One thing, it's, as I explained before, the rope should be measured over the biggest diameter. The other one, it's the rope, it must be ensured the rope, it's in a straight position and it's not bent like this position, because if you measure it here, you have not a right result, yeah, that's not okay, or the rope can't be during the measurement process spool it on a tram or on a reel for example. And are, are there any issues with rope under tension? Tension it's normal if you see when the rope will be inspected on the on the crane for example then you have tension inside but you should be careful that the tension is not too much then you have a wrong measurement result. Yeah? Then you can compare uh, regarding the discard criteria later on. Thank you very much. Thank well, you too. When you're satisfied that you've got the, um, the, the, the right measurements, are there any other considerations that you have to make in interpreting the results? Yeah, though we have in the standard two charts that you can see on the screen, on the left and on the right side. On the left side, that's a premissal difference between any two measurements as percentage for the nominal rope diameter for new ropes, or we have the tolerance of nominal rope diameter for new ropes with strands that are exclusively for wire or incorporate solid polymer. That's the chart on the right side. Thank you. 
Um, so we've, we've got an example here. Are, are these tolerances okay? Yeah, that was a measurement in the field that you can see here on the white circle and the red circle. Uh, the measurement was 34.90 up to 34.77 and the difference is okay and the rope was also okay. And this was a rope under tension. Thank you, Harold. Uh, that's really great to have had your knowledge on measuring wire rope. Thank you um, too, Pete. Thank you. I hope we've uh, covered everything uh, there that's, that's interesting to, uh, to, to our viewers. What we do have is we have a bulletin that's available to support this, uh, this presentation. Uh, the other thing that, that you can do is contact us using the email address uh, on the screen and we will put you in touch with one of our application specialists if you have specific questions about any of the material or your usage of wire rope covered here. Thank you very much for watching.